Praise the Lord. I know you came before, but this is the last Sunday of January. And I say happy, healthy, high year for you in Jesus' name. If you were here last Monday, when I said here, I don't mean physically here, I mean if you had the Bible study, you see that the Lord took our brothers, Daniel, Meshach, Abednego, and what well, the third one now? You know it. It took them ten times higher this year for you. Where are you? I said for you, your wife, your children, your parents, your husband, for our church, for me, ten times higher, ten times better, ten times farther, confirmed on me, on you, on everyone, on our church in Jesus' name. Where are you? Raise up that hand. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you because you are a God of covenant, a God of love, a God of power, a God of compassion. I pray today for us here, for everyone, everywhere in our country, continent, in the world, linked with us, hooked with us in this covenant service. I pray that you clear away every debris of the past in every life in Jesus' name. Your glory come upon everyone. Your blessing upon everyone. Your power manifested in every life in Jesus' name. You did it for others. For us today, for us this year, for everyone, ten times better in Jesus' name. Confirm your blessing upon everyone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to um, Colossians chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 3. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 3 it says, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And then in verse 9, in verse 9 it says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Verse 10, And ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power and ye are complete in him this year as we live in christ abide in christ and pray through the name he has given us i pray there'll be completeness in your life completeness in every way spiritually Completeness in every way professionally, completeness in every way domestically in your family, completeness in every way, everything you ask according to the will of God, according to the promise of God, he will fulfill in Jesus' name. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. In Hebrews chapter 13, we're looking at verse 20. How does this completeness come? How does this fullness of the Lord come in our lives? Now, the God of peace, with that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd, of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant there was the old covenant there is the new covenant and the new covenant is the everlasting covenant that's how we become complete in christ complete in every way as we read the word and we discover the promises of the Lord and we discover the goodness of the Lord and discover that in Christ 
and through Christ and by Christ we can have all the promises of God fulfilled in our lives that is how we come to the fullness of the provision to the fullness of our need being supplied and we find that God in Christ Christ through the covenant he'll make us complete in every way and then it says in verse 21 it says and make you perfect make you full make you matured and make you complete in every good work to do his will according walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Today we're talking about commitment to completeness through his covenant. There is the covenant. And that covenant provides everything complete in our lives. And we have to look away from the past and look at what is promised us and look at what is before us and then we're committed to being complete through the covenant he has made with us and is making with us there are three things we're looking at number one the personal covenant with the god of peace the personal Covenant with the God of peace. Number two, in the perpetual covenant with the God of performance. It's made promises. It's giving us promises. And then he will perform that which he has promised. And we have this perpetual covenant, not limited to January, not limited to this year, not limited to your middle age life, and it's all through your life. There's that perpetual covenant with the God of performance. We're looking at number three is the purposeful covenant. When God makes a covenant with anyone, with any family, with any group and with any nation and when he makes a covenant with the holy nation that's Christ, that's uh, the the church he makes that covenant and it's a purposeful covenant and when a man and a wife when they come together in a covenant in a contract there is a purpose to that and when he says he god is the husband of israel and he christ is the bridegroom of the bride the church that relationship and that covenant and that contract is for a purpose and the purpose is to lead you and lead everyone into the completeness that christ provided on the cross of calvary number three in the purposeful covenant of the god of all power let's look at number one number one is the personal covenant with the god of peace numbers chapter 25 and we're reading from verse 12 we're looking at numbers chapter 25 verse 12 it says wherefore say behold i give unto him there is israel but this is not for the whole of israel this is special this is peculiar to a man that pleased god in the death of his heart and it says behold i give unto him my covenant of peace it says moses tell phinehas because of what he has done because he delighted in my glory and because he lifted up my glory i'm going to make a covenant of peace with him verse 13 it was 13 and he shall have it he shall have it whatever will be happening in the land of israel whatever will happen to the majority of the six hundred thousand of men that came from egypt going to the land of canaan him in particular he shall have it 
and the siege after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because look at that, because it's a conditional thing, because of what he has done, because of loving me with all his heart, all his soul, all his mind, and because of being dedicated and committed to everything I wish, everything I desire, because he was zealous for his God and made an atonement for the children of Israel. Personal covenant. It is not like you know a global thing, a national thing, it is not like a community thing personal he took it upon himself that he will defend the glory of the lord and he will bring back the righteousness of god in the land and god said because of that i have a personal covenant with him i pray that this year god will single you out whatever is destroying the people will not come near you and whatever is devastating them and they're in dissolution whatever it will not come your way in jesus name the lord will respect the personal covenant that he makes what you look at isaiah chapter 54 and i'm reading from verse 10 isaiah 54 verse 10 for the mountains shall depart and the hills shall be removed but my kindness shall not depart from thee. The kindness of heaven, personal, and the goodness of heaven, personal, will never leave you in Jesus' name. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. It says, you have peace in your heart, peace in your soul. There will be peace in your family. As you go out, there will be peace. As you come in, there will be peace. Whatever is hanging in the air will not drop on your head. Because it says, the covenant, my covenant of peace, the covenant of my peace shall not be removed, says the Lord that has mercy on thee. Mercy on me. Mercy on me. The mercy will come to you in Jesus' name. What, what, what's mercy? Mercy is not giving us what we deserve we deserve judgment judgment will not come to you we deserve punishment punishment will not come to you that's the mercy of god the other side of the coin is grace what's grace grace is giving us what we don't deserve mercy is not giving us what we deserve we deserve punishment we deserve pressure, we deserve hunger, we deserve tears. Mercy will not give you what you deserve. Now, what don't we deserve? We don't deserve pardon, we don't deserve joy, we don't deserve any good thing, and grace is giving us what we don't deserve. Mercy and grace will follow you till the end of this year, your life, in Jesus' name. Uh, look, look there, look there at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, All thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Your biological children, they'll have great peace. Your spiritual children, they'll have great peace. And because I'm your father in the Lord, all my children, spiritually, the one I'm looking at now, that one I see up there, great will be your peace. There'll be no trouble or trauma in your heart. There'll be no hypertension for you. Because it says, all thy children will have great peace this year and for the rest of their lives in Jesus' name. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, in righteousness shall thou be established, thou shalt be far from oppression. 
for thou shalt not fear and from terror for he shall not come near thee and then in verse 17 it says in verse 17 no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn this is the heritage of the servants of the lord and the righteousness is of me says the lord the covenant of peace a personal covenant with the god of peace now he tells us in ezekiel chapter 34 reading from verse 25 and he says and i will make of them a covenant of peace you see the covenant the lord is making with us making with you making with the believer and making with the children of god and making with the whole church the church the body of christ is that he wants us to have peace peace within peace without as you come in as you go out anywhere you go anywhere you find yourself by the appointment of god you will have peace and all that thing that is troubling your heart all the anxiety and all the care the lord will take everything away all the worry the lord will take everything away because he says i will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil bees to cease out of their land and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods then in verse 26 it says in verse 26 it tells us and i will make in verse 26 i will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing you'll be a blessing and i will cause the showers to come down in a season read out that loud the last line there in your family read it aloud in your place of work read it aloud in the church as you come as you go as you learn as you practice the word of god read it aloud there shall be showers of blessing look at chapter 37 and verse 26 ezekiel 37 verse 26 moreover i will make a covenant of peace with them you see how the lord is repeating it from chapter to chapter and from book to book he says the covenant we have the covenant we have with god is the covenant of peace moreover i will make a covenant of peace with them it shall be an everlasting covenant for them the peace he wants us to have is not a temporary peace it's not a, a peace that can be terminated it's not a peace that comes now and then by the by the other day it's gone today on the mountain to the other day in the valley not an easy road the yoke of the dog will be easy for you this year because it says shall be an everlasting covenant with them and i will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them tell me tell me what follows forevermore 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 how many of you are going to enjoy the blessings of god forevermore be it confirmed in your life in jesus name now this peace how do we get into this peace and when we have this personal a covenant of the lord how does this peace come in how do we continue in the peace in romans chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 1 romans chapter 5 reading from verse one therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus Christ. look at that it says the way we enter into this covenant of peace we come to god as guilty condemned person and then we confess our sin we turn away from our sin and we receive jesus and welcome jesus as our savior 
he forgives us he sets us free he takes the condemnation away now there's no condemnation for them that walk not after the flesh they walk after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life has totally condemned sin and has set us free from the law of sin and death and we're justified we're acquitted all our guilt all our condemnation all the punishment of sin is taken away by the faith we have in the lord and now he says therefore because we have repented therefore because we have faith in christ therefore because we belong to him soul spirit and body and because we are completely his by personal prayer personal supplication by um, a kind of absolute surrender unto the lord it says therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god is no more our judge is now our father it's no more somebody who is angry with the wicked with us every day but now is the lover of our souls and because we are peace with him through our lord jesus christ now we have that covenant of peace look at verse 2 there in verse 2 by whom also we have access by faith into this grace we have access into the kingdom of god access into the peace of god by grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We are looking at the Philippians chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 7. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 and the peace of God and the peace of God, the peace of God which passes all understanding. The people will not understand. This year you'll be a kind of peculiar to everybody. In every situation you'll be peculiar. Amen because something is happening there is water on the stormy sea and it's getting into the boat and you're not panicking and the peace of god that passeth all understanding will abide in your heart and the people are wondering why how you see quiet like that how you see peaceful like that we know what is happening look at this look at this and yet he is at peace it passeth all understanding and the people around you if that happened around them they'll be panicking they'll be worried they'll be anxious they'll almost want to destroy themselves but you are peaceful because you know you have a covenant of peace with the lord and you know that that storm that nebuchadnezzar's fire and that uh, scene in the wilderness that all these uh, mixed multitudes are murmuring about, you, will not, you know, it will not get to you. I said it will not get to you. And because of that, you have this peace of the Lord, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. The peace of God will keep your heart and keep your mind through the Lord Jesus. What does that mean? Will keep your heart, will keep your mind. Out of the heart proceeded all the issues of life. Let's say, for example, you are walking this way and it's systematic and it's uh, progressive and it is, uh, you know, ordained of God and purposeful. And then all of a sudden, the wind begins to blow because the peace of God is keeping your heart. You keep walking, you keep moving at the same pace. You are not hurried and you are not disturbed and you are not jolted. That's why people will be surprised at your life this year because she you know, I led a point A. And I told all the people around me, I am going to point B. And between point A and point B, some things begin to shake and everybody crying and everybody kind of saying that we're lost, we're going to begin to curse themselves. And then your eyes are still on your target. Your movement is still in the right direction. The wind knows who to blow at, not you. 
the difficulties know who to judge but not you that's why the people are surprised because your heart and your mind stays on god look at verse 8 in verse 8 finally brethren whatsoever things are true while you're walking in your way and the peace of god is guarding your heart all you think about whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things actually what we think about is what disturbs our peace of mind somebody said this and then it came to your ears that so and so or somebody they don't want to mention the name of the person said this about you then all these covenant promises you have heard and all the good good things the lord has promised you you forget everything you are thinking on ah uh ah -uh, so and so could say that about me so and so could tell that big lie and you know pack it up and throw at me so and so and such and such can say such a thing is that thing you are thinking about that brings that worry that anxiety and that panic and that fear and that shaking into your life but on these things we think on these things we concentrate the thoughts of our lives because if you only think of those things that are true somebody says something about you but you know that thing is not true then don't think about it and then it says whatsoever things are honest somebody is playing a big game a big deal and is trying to be dishonest with you and then you, all the thing you can think about is this is dishonest and this man knows that this is not true and he could say that about me and he said we were in the gambling together but it's not true this is not honest that's right i know it's not honest you know it's not honest but you're thinking about it it's what will disturb you it will just scatter your life it says if you're going to remain at peace it says what things soever are true what things soever are honest what things whatsoever things are just i give him this expect him to give me that back i want him to reciprocate i love him let him show love back i'm fair to him let him show fairness to me but he does not that's not just but don't think about that if you think of the injustice of the people you know, the, the lord has given us the peace we're born again we're children of god the things they do the things they say the way they act if it is unjust that gets our attention and get that gets us jolted and troubled but it says what are you thinking about that you're good in the sight of heaven you're saved in the sight of heaven and you are right in the sight of heaven put all, put 1000 people together and put a million people together who we'll say oh, don't listen to him don't uh, you know don't pay attention to him it's a big zero it's a big hypocrite all those 1000 people that say that they are not equal to Jesus Christ was greater than all the people of the earth put together why don't you think of what Jesus has said what Jesus has done and the price Jesus has paid it's the thing we think about that's what gives us the worry and the anxiety and you say whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are pure you may see something on the billboard that doesn't bring pure thoughts into the earth you may see something in the media that that doesn't bring a pure things in the heart and something it just entered you didn't invite you didn't look for it it just entered into your tablet or into your ipad or into whatever and it's not pure just discard it because you have graduated from that class long ago i have graduated from that class long ago 
and they want to bring you back to primary school they want to bring you back to the school of the flesh and the school of the world and the school of a, a pure society but that's not yours anymore it's not mine anymore and that's what it say whatsoever things are and whatsoever things are lovely let's gang up together and throw something at him is that lovely is that how to love our neighbors ourselves is that how to love the brethren as christ the savior has loved us no then forget it because the only thing you're thinking about and the only thing you're planning your life to live on whatsoever things are lovely and whatsoever things of good report I'm, I'm going to do something if my daddy hears about that will that be a good report if caring loving mommy hears about that will there be will that be a good report if the pastor laboring on us and he wants us to remain pure because without holiness no man shall say the lord is laboring on us to be pure and holy and to be ready for heaven and the rapture if he hears that is that a good report no then don't do it because it says the only thing we think about and the only thing we focus on whatsoever is a good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things look at verse 9 in verse 9 it says those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do then it says and the god of peace shall be with you and the church say uh, look at look at something here at the beginning of verse 7 look at the beginning of verse 7 it says and the peace of god the peace of god the peace of god come back to verse 9 at the end of verse 9 the god of peace shall be with you the peace of god in verse 7 and then in verse 8 what we do what we believe how we live how we respond to situations in life that will bring the god of peace in verse 9 to now totally abide with us amen this year amen. happiness this year peace this year look at verse 13 in verse 13 i can do all things hold on you know people quote this verse in isolation i can do all things through christ which strengthens me yes if i have the peace of god but if my heart is disturbed if my mind is torn apart if my brain is heated up I will not be able to do anything i'm going for an exam and i felt i met somebody on the road he calls me by a bad name i stop i say you know how to call somebody a bad name the stone you threw to me i'm going to throw it at you and the fellow he threw number one you threw number two he said hey, you're killing me he said then he looked for a bigger stone remember you are going for exam and then he throws at you again you put your pot much whatever down and you say well fight it out after you know all the struggling and everything I remember I'm going for exam. Okay, I'll deal with you. You're a naughty person. Now you do that to me, and then you pick your whatever, and you run to the exam. You're panting. Your life is not settled. You didn't observe verse 8. And because of that, you're even confused. You don't know what am I going to write. And you're still angry inside your heart. You'll not be able to do all things through Christ because the strength is not there now but the peace of God abiding with you and the God of peace with you and you're only observing what is righteous and what is just and what is holy and what is pure and what is of a good report then with a settled mind 
our joy in your heart that makes your prayer to be answered because you are not disturbed by anything it says now i somebody say i, I. can do all things through christ which strengtheneth me it will happen look at verse 19 in verse 19 my god shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by christ jesus he will supply no panic don't worry don't be anxious my anxious heart be still what though it tarries long it will come it may be today it may not be today all the same impatient heart eager heart anxious heart be still everything will be all right are you sick be still and know the god who answers prayer is always by your side he has a plan for you he has a destination for you everything he will do he has told you already in this covenant month no anxiety be still he tells us in first thessalonians chapter 5 and I'm reading from verse 22. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Why? Because evil kills. Evil destroys. Evil can cut short one's life. Evil can bring damage destruction from any direction and so you abstain from evil what if i'm not sure it only appears to be evil well that thing that appears to be evil might turn out in the real sense in real life to be evil if you are not sure just abstain it says abstain from all appearance of evil and then in verse 23 and then you say the very god of peace you see that the god of the covenant of peace that makes a covenant of peace with us it says and the very god of peace sanctify you holy say amen to that sanctify you holy that means my heart sanctified my tongue sanctified it means my mind sanctified it means my thoughts the think the things i'm thinking about sanctified it means my projects my plan sanctified it means i do not allow anything any plan, any thought, unsanctified, uncircumcised, unrighteous in my life. It says, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in verse 24, it said, faithful is see, he is faithful to the covenant he has made. It's a covenant keeping God. He gives us the promises. He gives us what our possession will be. He gives us what our expectation should be to the covenant is making with us. And he said, faithful is see that calleth you who also will do it they will do it in your life in isaiah chapter 26 reading from verse 3 it says thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stage on thee because he trusteth in thee the word trust is the old testament uh, alternative for faith 
he believes he trusts in you it says thou will keep him in perfect peace whose might is stage on thee because he trusted in thee look at verse 4 in verse 4 it says trust ye in the lord believe in the lord forever yes you believe yesterday you are believing today you are believing tomorrow whatever is happening the disturbing your body disturbing your mind your soul your spirit as you trusted him before and he brought you this far keep on believing trust ye in the lord forever for in the lord jehovah is everlasting strength Look at verse 12. In verse 12, Lord, thou wilt ordain peace for us. He's made the covenant of peace with us. And because of that, in any situation, every situation, it says, Thou wilt ordain peace for us, for thou also hast wrought all our works in us. Verse 16. In verse 16, Lord, in trouble. They have visited thee. They poured out a prayer when the chastening was upon them. And look at the counsel now in verse 20. It says, Come, my people, always go to the Lord whenever there's any challenge. And even when there's no challenge, you are just happy, hilarious, excited. Then you go to the Lord to show the gratitude you have, the affection you have for the God of goodness who has done all this to you. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. Enter thou into thy chambers. Now, it's good to be outside once in a while as when it's necessary actually being outside the sun that shines on you even physically improves your health and makes you to be very strong and healthy but don't spend all your time outside brooks dry up and the sun shines on it all the time and the brook does not have anywhere to go and all the outside interactions external interactions they dry up the christian life the spiritual life if you're always out always out always out and if you're always with them outside your spiritual life is dried up and you do not have the power to pray. And you do not have the mind to conceive the promises of a coming, coming. And it says, enter into thy chambers. And then it says, shut up thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were. Hide thyself as it were. There are people who are always out there, always talking, always chatting, always discussing, always, 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 you know, interacting with people. And they tell all their secrets and they tell all their lies. They never stop talking. And they're always exposed to the dangers outside there. Why don't you stop that for some time now and come back in and have fellowship with the God of peace and have more of the peace of God in your life and let him channel to you the blessings of heaven upon your life. Enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were many people are too much exposed exposed to the world but it says hide thyself as it were for a little season until the indignation be overpassed this indignation if you have any indignation now from any direction it will soon clear away my brother take heart don't think too much about that it will clear Amen. discouragement depression despair i can't sleep in the night don't worry about it it will soon clear away Amen. and all the peace the lord has for you will blossom in your life in jesus name i'm coming to point number two now point number two is the perpetual covenant with the god of performance performance in your life this year performance in your life 
There are so many promises in the Bible and uh, what you should do is to be looking at those promises. Just open your Bible and then you'll find in Genesis chapter 1, there's a promise there that says that you're made in the likeness of God and God is going to make you fruitful. Keep on reading that promise until you become fruitful. You will be fruitful in Jesus' name. And then I'm going to Exodus and it says obey him and it says he will fulfill the number of your days praise the Lord no premature death in your life in Jesus and then I'm coming to I'm coming to live it because I'm the Lord that makes you holy depend on the promises feed on the promises and then in numbers it says that as he lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man is lifted up. Your life is preserved in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy tells us, and he says, If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, these sicknesses on the outsiders will not even come near you. And then it says it will take sickness out of the midst of you. Joshua says the place where your foot shall tread upon, I've given it to you. What I'm telling you is there are promises everywhere. Promises in the Bible, promises Old Testament, promises New Testament. Depend on those promises. Read those promises. Meditate on those promises. Your life will be different this year in Jesus' name. It says in Luke chapters, Luke chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 72 in verse 72 here is what he tells us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant he will remember his holy covenant every day in your life in jesus name and then he will perform the promise that is made unto you amen, amen. promises promises they bring joy they bring answers to prayer they bring abundant life and they bring everything you wish everything you desire and the, the promises he had made for the people and is going to confirm them and perform them in jesus name look at isaiah chapter 50 uh, no, sorry in jeremiah chapter 1 i'm reading from verse 11 jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11 moreover the word of the lord came unto me saying Jeremiah, what seest thou? Brother, what seest thou? Sister, what seest thou? In any situation, you will see something with your mind's eye. You might see God. You might see Christ. You might see Calvary. You might see the bright, shining promise of God. Or you might see the enemy and the enemy is tall that's what you think like Goliath the enemy is big that's your thought and the enemy is furious like Nebuchadnezzar who do you see and what do you see but if you see God and you say God is on the throne if you see the word of God the unchangeable and the irreversible promise of God, if that is what you see, if you see the God that cannot fail and the Christ cannot, that cannot fail, what seest thou? Look at verse 12. In verse 12, then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well. Amen. When you're looking at the enemy and the only thing you see every day is the enemy, are you seeing well? Tell me. When you see the negative and then you begin to cry, we're going to die. Why did we come out of Egypt? And Moses, why did you take us away from that place where we had the pots and the lyrics and the, and the leeks and the onion? Why did you take us from there? And look at this manna now and this light food. If that is what you see, terrible. But when you see the God, 
that will punch the Red Sea. He did it before, he will do it again. When you see the one that brings water out of the rock, he did it before, he can do it again. I can hear you. You know, they say that rock is dry. What I'm saying is, they say that womb is dry. They say no child can come out of this rock. No water can come out of this rock. When you see the God who opens the rock and water comes out, impossibilities will be possible in your life in Jesus' name. Life depends on what you see as we move from day to day and from week to week and from year to year life depends on what you see and if you see right and you see the promise of god then you will understand that was seen well for i will hasten my word to perform it performance in your life Fulfillment in your life in Jesus' name. Psalm 57, I'm looking at verse 2. Psalm 57, we're looking at verse 2. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. I will cry. That means I will pray. That means I'll beseech the throne of God. I will call unto God, the Most High, the God that performeth all things for me. That's why verse 7 tells us, it says in verse 7, My heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. My heart is focused on you. My mind is focused on you because he is the God that performs all things for me. I will sing and give praise. What do you sing? If you say your heart is fixed on God and you say it again, my heart is fixed. When do you sing? In the midnight while Paul and Silas were in the dungeon in the prison and their backs were bleeding and their feet were in stalks they sang praises unto the Lord that the time to sing if your heart is fixed on God and if you know he will perform all things concerning you that's the time to sing the time of the midnight when it appears things are dark as you sing it will loosen all the chains on your leg it will heal the wound at your back and it will open the windows of the prison and it will shake the foundation of the prison you will come out because he is the God that performs all things. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 55, reading from verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. In verse 7, it says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the righteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy see upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon and then in verse 8 it says for my thoughts are not your thoughts my thoughts are not your thoughts the supernatural is far above the natural the natural the natural man the natural woman thinks is finished I'm done. And it means they've done their worst. I cannot go beyond this point anymore. Look at this, look at this. That's the natural man's thought and the natural woman's thought. Now it says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. If you are thinking limitation for yourself, that's not the thought of God. If you are thinking, no more progress for me, that's not the thought of God, you will still move higher than where you are today. 
For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. In verse 9, it says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and uh, returneth not hither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it to, bud, to, uh, to bring forth and bud, that it may bring, give seed to the sower and bread to the heat eater. In verse 11, it says, So shall my word be for you this year that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that means it, it shall perform that which i please and it shall prosper in the thing where to i sent it the word of god will prosper in your life this year look chapter 1 verse 37 in Luke chapter 1 verse 37 for with God nothing shall be impossible Mary said angel what are you telling me how can that be because I know not a man and the angel said God walks beyond your scientific knowledge he walks beyond your biological knowledge he walks beyond your historical knowledge the, the spirit of god the holy ghost shall come upon you overshadow you and that holy thing that shall be born of you shall be called the son of the highest and then she said let it be unto me watch god and the angel has brought unto me and then the angel said for with god nothing shall be impossible you know in our lives as human beings how old are you now you have lived from the age one to age 50 age 60 age 65 and you've learned that this is impossible this is important we've learned so much of what's impossible and now the lord is saying can you wipe out all that knowledge of impossibility you've carried with you from age one to age 65 can you wash that off and now turn around and say possible 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 they say if that disease has reached stage one stage two stage three stage four all that remains now just a few months they say impossible what do you say they say if you've married for these many years and there was no child they say impossible what do you say they say if you went to school and you bang your head on the wall and you always carried failure, failure, failure. They say, look at the number of years that have been happening. They say now impossible. What do you say? You must change your vocabulary. You must change your thought. You must change your mind. You must come to the side of God. What do you see? If you only see the past and you only see what had been done before and you only see your limitation, you'll be carrying on with the old time vocabulary impossible. But if you turn around and who do you see? And you see only God and you see His power, you see His promise, you see the performance, and you see that we're dealing with. God not man what do you say good things will be possible in your life this year for with God nothing shall be impossible look at verse 45 
blessed is she that believed for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the lord everything the lord has told us in all these services this year last year the other year every good thing the lord has told us there shall be a performance we're looking at romans chapter 4 verse 20 in romans chapter 4 verse 20 it says he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but it was strong in faith giving glory to god that's talking about abraham god promised him that laughter isaac will come into his life through sarah and uh, you know he was getting older and older and older and uh, he looked at the biological evidence the human evidence the historic evidence in his life that once the wife gets to this situation the only vocabulary is impossible but now it says when abraham when he looked at the promise of god he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but he was strong in faith giving glory to god verse 21 in verse 21 being fully persuaded are you fully persuaded this year that a better life is in front of you are you better are you fully persuaded this year that what you could not do before now you will do are you fully persuaded that the things you've tried and failed the things you've tried and failed tried and failed that this year is a year of success a year of performance he says i'm being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was also able to perform 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 christ in you will perform through you the god of purpose and the god of all power in you will perform through you this year in jesus name i believe i believe acts chapter 27 we're reading from verse 23 acts chapter 27 verse 23 for there stood by me this night the angel of god hold on they stood by me you know paul had been told you will get to caesar do you want to go to caesar unto caesar shall you go and then 40 people more than 40 people had bound bounded themselves together and they said we will not eat until we kill paul and eventually uh, you know the governor made the arrangement that he should go to rome and go and see go and appear before caesar as they got on the ship there was storm on the ship and they were casting their wares all their property into the sea to lighten the to lighten the ship most people will not sleep in that condition because the storm is too much and are you going to caesar i'll get you to caesar and those 40 people the only thing they'll be thinking of and the only thing they'll be dreaming of the 40 people and what the governor said and they'll be imagining the facial appearance angry disposition of uh, caesar and then they'll be looking at the storm and then they remember, and you do say, God has forgiven you. I, I, why are you suffering all these things? Is the punishment of all you did to those people in persecution in the past, that's what you see now. That's what they've been thinking of. They'll never see an angel in their dream. They'll see evil spirits. They'll see the messenger of death. They'll see the people that have died calling them and saying, come, come, come. That's all they see because of what they're thinking about. Your thoughts produce your dreams many times. But now, it was 
Paul, what seest thou? I see the God of heaven and I see the plan of God, everything working out and everything I'm doing now and the steps I'm taking, I see God. You see very well. This year, you'll see very well. If you are not thinking of what those bad people, those conspirators and those uh, fellows, if you are not thinking of what they did, what they said, how they said they'll finish your life, how can man finish what God has raised up? God has raised you up. Nobody can finish you. Even Satan cannot finish you. The evil spirits cannot finish you. You will see the messenger of God, not the messenger of death. You will see the messenger of God, the angel. He'll tell you the might of God. Look at verse 23. And there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Verse 24. And saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Can I hear an amen there? He said, Paul, what one you will see Caesar? So get ready to answer questions and be bold. And not only that, all these people, they don't know how to pray. All these people, they don't even know me. But because of you, I have given all these that sail with you, I have given them unto you. You didn't catch that one. You are a believer, all your household. Even if they don't fast, they don't pray, the Lord has given them to you. Yeah. All your family, your wife, your children, and those who are living with you, walking in, in your house, even if they don't know how to pray and pray and pray and wait on the Lord in the night, the Lord has given them unto you. Yeah. There'll be protection for them. There will be preservation in their lives. Didn't you see Paul and Silas when they prayed? Didn't you see how their shackles and chains were broken? And the chains and the shackles of all the prisoners, everything loose. And then the windows and the doors that opened, it opened for every one of them. This year, the Lord will bless you. And all the people that surround you who are living with you, the goodness of God will flow from your life to them in Jesus' name. It says, and God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Look at verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. That's all the faith we need. I believe, I accept, I assure you that it shall be. Somebody say, it shall be even as it was told me. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 21, verse 33. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. His words shall not pass away. There will be performance in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Who is that? I said, who am I talking about? That this year will be a year of fulfillment. Who is that? A year of performance. Who is that there? Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at point number three here. Point number three, the purposeful covenant 
of the God of all power, the purposeful covenant of the God of all power. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 32, and I'm reading from verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm and there is nothing too hard for thee when you look at your life and the doctor says why did you wait until this time before you came now it's gone beyond us if we say we're giving you any medical attention it will be a waste of your money but can God fail and then you're looking for admission you're on here you're on there you're on there what is it they've closed the door general that's not for you and uh, then you say okay what am i going to do now look up to god the admission will come from god to you A brother needed to get somewhere and he was to take the plane from here to that place and he got to the counter he submitted his ticket submitted everything and the dash 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 and all that on their board on their you know on their screen what he said all the seats are taken everything is filled up and there is no other flight going today or even tomorrow to that place you are going the thing is closed so he, he let the man at the counter and went to the lord and said lord i need to be in that place you are sending me there and i need to be there by this time if i don't take this flight then I'm not going to get there. And so he came back to the same counter and to the same um, to the same person that is checking that I got checked up a few minutes ago, and he put that same ticket on his desk and said, "I'm going to such and such place." He acted as if he had not seen that person before, and I, you know, need my seat number. And the person said, but I told you just now. Ah, he said, okay, check out. And then he did all the ta 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 ta, -ta and everything, and said, ah, somebody had just cancelled. And now you have a place. He said, I could have told you that my place is there. I came to tell you this morning, your place is there. And so because he's a God of all power, he will move everything around to create a space for you. Ah, Lord God, behold thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm and there is nothing too hard for thee. Verse 27, in verse 27 it says, Behold, I, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Nothing too hard for him. In Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 16, Romans chapter 1 verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the good news of Christ, the gospel of Christ, the glad tidings of Christ, for it is the power of God to unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew force and to the Greek is the power, the good news we are hearing, the glad tidings we are hearing, the gospel we are hearing, the word of salvation and the word of healing and the word of sanctification and the word of power that we are hearing coming from the Lord is the power of God. It will perform in your life in Jesus' name. And then in verse 17, verse 17 says, For therein is the righteousness of 
God revealed from faith to faith, revealed from faith to faith. At the beginning, initial faith, we get saved by faith. As we continue, as we continue increasing faith, we get sanctified, we get healed, we get delivered. It's from faith to faith, the faith for salvation. The faith for sanctification, the faith for our healing, the faith for the supernatural. It says it is from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. It tells us in Second Corinthians chapter 13, reading from verse 4. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. The same power that raised Christ from the dead. The same power that translated him, transported him from earth to heaven in his ascension. That same power of God is available to every believer today. And it says, He liveth by the power of God, for we also are weak in him. But we shall live with him by the power of God. God toward you and that power will never fail in any of our lives in Jesus name in first Corinthians chapter 2 we're looking at verse 5 first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 5 that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men was the wisdom of men all the intelligence and the skill that constructed all those bridges all those flyovers all those under the sea uh, bridges or roads and all those the wisdom of men that made those aircrafts the wisdom of men that made all the drugs and all the things that they use in treating the body it says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. We go beyond what the wisdom of man, the skill of man is able to do, is able to produce. And we go and we depend on the power of God. And because of that, you will go beyond what the wisdom of men have done in this world. If I were here, I would say, Amen. Look at verse 9, in verse 9, but as it is written, I has not seen, no ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Look at verse 10, it says, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searches all things yea the deep things of god 11 11 says for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Verse 12. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world. We have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. You understand? With the Spirit of the world, we interpret literature books. We go to school. There is that literature book 
we're going to take exam on it and the spirit the understanding the intelligence of men they reach that and the interpreters and the teachers so that when we go to the exam we will be able to make a very good grade in that literature book but all that literature book and all the writings of all the authors they are interpreted unto us by the spirit of men but now we come to the bible and there are some people they interpret the bible with the spirit of men with the same understanding that their literature class teacher taught them they applied the same thing the construction of the sentence the vocabulary and the dictionary meaning of that and with all that understanding you know spirit of god they interpret unto us and they keep us on the land they keep us on the ground but when the spirit of god breathes upon that word of god and we read the promise of god and we see no impossibility and we see god in the verses that we're reading because now it's the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God you will know and it will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus name in 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 3 giving no offense in any sin that the ministry be not blamed look at verse 6 it says in verse 6 by pureness by knowledge by long suffering by kindness by the holy ghost by love and faith and then in verse 7 it says by the word of truth by the power of god that's how we live we look at the promises of god we look at the the love of god and now we look at the power of god by the word of truth and the, by the power of god by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left we're looking at second timothy chapter one verse seven it says for god has not given us tell me the spirit of fear if somebody has the spirit of fear number one it's not just ordinary fear everybody is afraid i'm afraid they're afraid she's afraid he's afraid mm -mm, mm -mm. it's a spirit the spirit when the spirit grabs a man he has the fear of the future he has fear of what is coming tomorrow. He has fear of he might die of hunger. He has fear when employment is increasing, he may not get any job. He has fear that life will not deal well with him or with her. That fear is not from God. Oh, but I know some people who are believers and they have fear all the same. God has not given us. You may point to Elijah, fear. And you may point to the children of Israel, fear. That's the fear that made them to moment to complain and to grumble. You might you know, refer to any man, any woman. He has fear. He's afraid of him. He's afraid of her. He's afraid of the public. He's afraid of uh, intimate people. Whatever the fear God has not given us, the spirit of fear, but of power. Amen. Amen. The Lord will strike all that fear from your life in Jesus' name. He says he has given us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let the church say, Look at First Peter chapter one. I'm reading from verse five. First Peter chapter one. Looking at verse five, who are kept by the power of God. Who are kept by the power of God. If we go in, should be kept in salvation, the power of God. If we're going to be kept in the life of sanctification that leads to heaven is by the power of god if we're going to be kept on the straight and narrow road that leads to heaven is by the power of god if we're going to be kept without being jolted 
without being driven away from the path we ought to follow if we're going to be kept in our conviction if we're going to be kept in the covenant that he will do what he has promised who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time amen, amen. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth when Christ appears to you like he appeared after his resurrection to those disciples there's something he will tell you when Christ appears unto you like he appeared to Paul there's something he will tell you when Christ appears to Mary and Martha crying and weeping their beloved brother Lazarus is dead is in the graves is evil stinking now and Christ comes like a welcome to you there's one thing you will hear from him when you're sick when you are down when you are shattered when the world is not serving you right and when everybody around you is crying thinking and saying sorry sorry it's like all things have finished and Christ will appear to you what will he say all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth it's appearing to you now it's going to talk to you it's going to say wipe your tears away it's going to tell you the thing your life has not finished it's going to tell you that bright you know look at the open door and go through he will tell you where are you all power is given unto him in heaven and in earth go ye therefore go back home carrying success with you carrying victory with you carrying deliverance with you go through go therefore and go to the rest of the year good way of the lord is open before you all power is given unto him your savior your deliverer your sanctifier and your protector your redeemer all power is given unto him in heaven and on earth god fill your life with goodness all through this year and beyond in jesus name rise up now and let us pray we're committed to completeness completeness in our lives we're committed to complete victory complete provision and complete supply of the god that cannot fail the god of peace and the god of performance and the god of all power bring your heart bring your problem bring your desires bring everything to the lord in prayer this is your chance then just close your mouth this is your chance don't just make it like an ordinary service this is your chance that you can open your heart open your mind open everything every spring of your heart of your soul unto the lord today and let him give you peace peace in your heart there's no peace says the lord for the wicked turn away from wickedness turn away from evil turn away from the world and say lord i come come unto me for ye that labor and a heavy lady and i will give you rest i'll give you peace come he rejects none it's not an impartial god he promised he gives peace to every soul 
any peace between you and your husband? Is the God of peace? Make him the foundation, the fountain, the pillar, the sustainer. Make him the partner, the provider. Make him the maker of the home. There will be peace in both of your hearts. New Year peace. Don't let us go on like the previous year. Peace does not fight. Peace does not knock heads together. Peace does not torture the other person. Peace does not think evil of anyone. Peace does not retaliate. Peace does not strike, smite other people. Peace does not destroy other people's families peace it will grant you peace your life your action your thoughts your disposition it gives peace peace does not wear an angry face And peace is not hypocritical either. Peace will not give you hypertension. Peace. Peace. He gives perfect peace to those whose minds are staged on him. A covenant of peace to you, to your family, to the local church, to the whole of our church. Peace. When there is peace, we live with one another. We're able to express ourselves. Nobody makes us afraid. We don't make anybody afraid. Nobody oppresses any other one when there's peace. Performance in our lives. All the promises he has given, performance. You have seen well when you see Christ in the sheep. You don't see the water, you see Christ. You don't see the storm, you see Christ. You don't see the waves, you see Christ. You don't see the helplessness of the other disciples. You see Christ. There will be performance in your life. Let us go to the other side. There will be performance. We'll get there. We'll get there. His power will hold you up. His power will move you on. Performance of the promise of steadfastness. Performance. The promise of salvation. Call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Performance. Sanctification. 
faithful you see that call it you who also will do it there'll be performance healing of course by his stripes were healed performance deliverance he will deliver you there'll be performance every promise is given progress every place the soul of your foot shall tread on that shall be given unto you performance and no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper performance he will perform his good work in your life there will be performance power power to save it manifests his power power to destroy all those works of the devil he will do it performance and power the power of the lord will rest upon you and what seemed impossible in the past will become possible now there will be the manifestation of the power of God in your life give him the chance to walk in your life don't give up look ahead the door to progress is open the door to power power to live and overcome in life courageous life conquering life that power is available when Christ appears he tells you all power is given unto him for your sake is given unto him for the fulfillment and performance of the word in your life all power given unto him that you can go in this might in this victory of the lord for the power of the lord rests upon you Trust him, believe him, don't look back at what usually happens every year. If you see what you saw last year, don't look the way you look at the negative power to crush you like you did in the previous year see your God see your deliverer see your healer what you see will determine what the outcome of your life will be see him the all in all for your life see him you will cross your red sea you'll be on the sinking side of the red sea shouting side of the red sea you'll be on the jubilating side of the Red Sea, you sing a new song. 
live a new life, follow a new path, achieve the new goal, new year, a new song. In Jesus' name we pray. Congratulations. This year will be far, far, far better than last year. In Jesus' name. The God of peace will go with you. The God of power will go with you. And the God of purpose, performance, he has a purpose for your life. That thing he had willed for more eternity, he will fulfill this year. What are you there? Father, in Jesus' name, we know you love us yet like you love Jesus, your only begotten son. You gave him for us so that all blessings will flow into our lives lord i pray for anyone that is not saved not born again who has not become a member of the family of god i pray the door of salvation open now will admit them in in jesus name forgive their sin set them free Bring peace, the peace of salvation into their hearts in Jesus' name. Now for the whole family of God, the children of God, born again, saved, and names written in the life of God. I pray newness of life, joy, victory, triumph. A conquering life you give to everyone in Jesus' name. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Lord, I pray anything that had tormented any child of God. Whatever they receive, it may be their carelessness, it may be their fault, it may be for whatever reason, Lord, in your mercy and grace, take torment away from every life in Jesus' name. Lord, cancel the failure in their lives. Cancel the weaknesses in their lives. Cancel the torment in their lives. Cancel the disease and the sickness in their lives. All those torment, tormenting demons, I command those tormenting demons, come out in Jesus' name. I pray all the power of Dagon, Dragon, demons, come under your feet sickness away from your body disease away from your body and you'll enjoy the healing from the stripes of christ in jesus name lord jesus you said we'll have life and have life more abundantly i pray that that poverty penury take from hand to mouth Cancel it from every life. In your miraculous way, the whole earth is yours and all the fullness thereof. Let each one have enough supply, sufficient supply, so that their lives will be happy. Their lives will be healthy. Their lives will be well provided for in Jesus' name. Lord, overlook all the murmurings of the past all the complaints of the past all the dry rock i pray will bring out water abundant supply in your trade abundant supply in the work of your hand abundant supply in your family 
and the parent will become father and mother of children in jesus name open doors of great opportunities before everyone I pray that you just open the door you open their eyes to you to know that that open door there is for you that open door there is for you enter in you'll find pasture you'll find supply you'll find everything in jesus name lord i pray power will come to every life the power to stand the power to walk the power to run the power to achieve the wisdom and the power to get everything they ought to get out of life in Jesus' name. You said, I give unto your power. Over all the power of the enemy. I pray for every brother, every, every sister, every young brother, every young sister, every teenage brother, teenage sister, and every child, a brother, every child, a sister. Lord, I pray you give them power that is higher than the power of their enemies. Over the scorpion, over the serpent, over any evil spirit, give them power in Jesus' name. In the day power, in the night power, outside power, inside power, and the power to overcome and to conquer, give to everyone. Lord, let there be a remarkable difference in every life from today. Now as they go out, they'll walk on the stormy sea. They walk on their problems. And every, everywhere you go, peace, performance, and power. In the office, peace, performance, and power. On the street, peace, performance, and power. And when the things that used to happen, they try to raise up their ugly head again, peace, performance, and power. Lift up everyone to a higher level, to a greater level, so that this year will be the year of performance, achievement, and success for everyone. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Once again, until I see you again, happy, healthy, holy achievement of life in Jesus' name.